gonna do season three? I'm not, I'm not at liberty to say, but I, I hope so. My name's Doug Myro. I'm an executive producer on Narcos. You're the man we gotta talk to. <laughs> um, so, so in the first episode of season two, Narcos Mexico, there's a lot of uh, focus on El Chapo yeah. and the Tijuana cartel, who we know that sorted history. Yes, yes. So where do we go from here for a season three? Um, it's that's still in the works. There's that much I can say about that. Uh, there, I mean, I don't want to give it too much away, but you will in season two um, get to know uh, Chapo a little bit more and the other cartels a little bit more. Um, the Ariana Felix and and there's a little bit more of the empire sort of the sprawling storylines of Felix's empire and following those. So we will, in season two, get start sprawling and getting to know those cartels a little bit more, and then more so even in season three. So it'll continue. I want to know, since I watched the first episode, and we had the Tijuana cartel, and we have El Chapo, so we know in history what happens the Tijuana cartel take over. So for season three... I, I can't say, but I'm... I, 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 we've covered a lot of, uh, we've, we've done a lot of research on a lot of things. And so if there is a season three, I think, you know, you can look at, you know, a chronology of the war on drugs and know where it's going. And, you know, it's, the next big one is Amado Cruyff Fuentes. But it's going to be a season three. I'm not, I'm not at liberty to say, but I, I hope so, yeah. In season one, we see El Chapo give uh, Felix for his birthday, a 40, 40th birthday, a tiger. Is that a true story? Um, I don't think it's, I mean, I'm sure something like that happened. They gave extravagant gifts, you know, but there definitely is a little creative license there. And, and he had just definitely got extravagant, crazy gifts for his birthday, you know, like legendary gifts for his birthday. So where do you guys get your information as far as like the DEA, especially for this one, because they go, I mean, deep undercover. We, uh, we, you know, we, in success, you know, after the first two seasons, there was no shortage of DEA agents, former DEA agents who reached out and said, you know, I want to tell my story. And what I find generally is with, you know, cops, with lawyers, with, with you know, occasionally with narcos, they have their own truth. They come and they say, here's what really happened. And of course, you know, they're a central character in their story, you know, and, and we all are. We are all either hero or victim in, in our story. And Operation Leanda, which was the revenge mission for, for Kiki Camarena, was a, a study in contradictions. A lot of, we, I can't tell you how many people I met who said, I was in charge of this and here's what we did. And so what it gave us was beyond sort of the curiosity, like, well, okay, then what was it really? Um, we were able to sort of create a composite that was, that covered all of these versions. Because the reality is it didn't work. You know, it ends in failure, like so much of what we do in the war on drugs, you know, because we continue to look outward rather than inward and look at how do we treat a nation of drug addicts rather than put them in jail, you know. Um, and so I think that uh, uh, in, in this season to have been able to, you know, I think more than ever further this sort of this horrible confluence of agendas that are political and economic and that have nothing to do with, you know, fighting drugs.